Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Sutton. What if the way that you're feeling right now, at least in part, isn't yours? I mean, what if it literally is not your feeling? What if it is someone else's feeling? Now, before you think that I've gone totally off the deep end, I'm going to explain a little bit of the science behind what I'm asking. And if you're someone who's tuned into the energetics, this might make sense to you already. Because if you're naturally an empath, then you are probably recognizing that you are picking up stuff from the world around you all the time. But what if you're not, or what if you're not really inclined to believe that that sort of thing exists? Could it be possible that what you are feeling right now, those very important feelings that contribute to how we treat the people in our lives, how we make decisions, what if those feelings don't even belong to you? What if they're not true to the core of who you are? That is the question we are going to explore today, along with some helpful hints, just in case you think, well, this might not fully be mine, some helpful, helpful hints on how to get rid of all that stuff that doesn't belong to you. First thing I want to mention is that this is another one of those days, like an episode that a few months ago, where I am literally under a blanket, because even though we are under a blanket of snow here in Maine, and in fact, it is snowing right now, it is gorgeous outside, um, that also means that there are lots of plows going by, and it also sounds like someone is decided to cut down every single tree in their yard. Um, maybe they're just feeling a little shut in because it's pretty dark this time of year. It happens to be just past the winter solstice that I'm recording this episode. And uh, so whatever it is, there's a lot of noise. So I am not just under a blanket of snow. I am literally under a blanket. So if you hear some rustling, there's a little sample rustling. That's why. But I'll try to keep that. I'll try to keep from moving around too much so that it doesn't hopefully bother you at all. Also, I want to just say this is the first year where I opened up the doors for people to contribute to the podcast and help ensure that we can continue. As you can imagine, it takes a lot of time and energy to create the Relationship Alive podcast. And I am so appreciative of your contributions to help keep this thing going. If you are interested in being a supporter and you aren't already, then you can visit neilsatin.com slash support and just choose something that's right for you. Or if you can't visit that website right now, just text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions and I will email you a link so that you can easily visit our site and make a contribution to help ensure we can continue. And I'm so grateful for your help. Also, um, it's new this over the past few months, we've had some sponsors for the show. And this week, one of our sponsors is Talkspace.com. You can visit Talkspace.com slash alive and use the coupon code alive for $30 off your first month of online therapy with them. So definitely check that out if you're looking for some extra support this time of year. And I can tell you a little bit more about Talkspace later. But first, happy holidays, and let's dig into this question. What if what you're feeling isn't yours? I know it's a little crazy sounding, but here's the reality. We have mirror neurons in our brains that are there to help us understand what is happening in the world around us. And in particular, they respond to what we see, feel, experience. I think it's part of our neuroception, as Steve Porges talks about, with the other people in our environment. So your mirror neurons are there to actually give you an experience similar to what's happening across from you 
with a person. So this is kind of a real time thing where you could be literally experiencing the mirror of what is going on with another person. So if you're able to have those feelings, and we already know through some of our other conversations, notably our conversation with Peter Levine about trauma and how trauma gets stored in the body, then we know that the feelings and experiences that you're having can get lodged within you. And another aspect of this that I've spoken about on the podcast, well, we for one thing, we talked about mirror neurons with Dan Siegel back in episode 57. So you should definitely check that out. And, uh, and I believe we also talked about that with Keith Witt. On top of that, um, in a recent conversation with Alex Katahakis, uh, where we were talking actually about sex addiction and addiction to dating, um, and basically addictions of all kinds and, and how those work on a neurobiological level and why that has an impact on our relationships. Uh, when we were talking with Alex Katahakis, there was this really fascinating discovery that our right brains actually communicate with each other. So we have a very left brain way of thinking about communication. You know, I say something to you like, welcome to the Relationship Alive podcast. And, and you get it based on the meaning of my words or maybe the tone of my voice or maybe if you happen to be here seeing me right now, although that would be kind of weird because I'm under this blanket, but you get the idea. There, there are all these ways of communicating that way. However, our right brain doesn't think in terms of language. It thinks in terms of emotion, in terms of sensation, in terms of a quality of experience. And our right brains can literally tune in to the right brain of the person sitting across from us and have a communication that's going on under the surface of whatever we might actually be talking about. So here is another way that you could literally be picking up on what is happening from the person across from you, and that could be giving you a felt experience. And that's a phenomenon all the time in, like if you go to see a therapist, they talk about uh, transference and countertransference. Countertransference being when the therapist actually develops some sort of feelings um, or, or is responding to a felt experience that they're having with their client. That's a kind of an oversimplified explanation. But the reason that's so important is because it can actually be a therapeutic tool, especially if you're aware of this right brain to right brain communication, because you might be having an experience that the right brain of your client is actually giving you totally under the surface of whatever their left brain is speaking at you. So here are two brain-to-brain -brain waves, brain-to-brain <laughs> -brain ways that your brain waves can be picking up on what's happening in the world around you and giving you an experience that may not actually be about who you are and how you if you were fully being you, would respond in a particular situation. And maybe you've experienced this before where someone who's been really anxious and worried about a particular topic comes to talk to you about it and um, over the course of your conversation with them, you start to feel that same kind of anxiousness and worry. And if you don't do something to consciously clear those kinds of feelings that other people can stir up in you, then they can live in you and they can become attached to physical experiences, to things that you're doing in the world that then at some point in the future re-evoke that very same feeling in you. So you're actually having the memory of a feeling that wasn't even yours to begin with, that belonged to, let's say, that hypothetical person who is sharing with you their worry about something. And that can happen in all kinds of ways. It can happen with fear, uh, with anger, uh, potentially it could even happen with love, right? Because we're talking about some intense feelings. And 
you know, imagine someone sitting there with you um, describing their feelings of love for another human and really opening up your heart to that uh, conversation and opening up your right brain and your mirror neurons to that conversation so you could be sitting there with that person and feel an amazing connection with them. The kind of connection that you might wonder about later, huh, did that mean something that I was feeling that way? Well, it might have, or you might have been just picking up on what that person was experiencing. So, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's bad, although the bad things are the things that I think tend to get stuck a little bit more because it doesn't feel good to feel bad. Um, I guess that goes without saying. And our natural inclination is usually to move away from pain. We move towards pleasure. We move away from pain. And so if you're moving away from pain, then you're probably not spending enough time in the pain to recognize whether that pain is actually yours or not. So it's going to get stuck there. Whereas if you're feeling something good, you're going to go towards it. You're probably going to milk that experience for all it's worth. Milk that good feeling. And we move through the world bombarded by what is happening around us, good and bad. You can run into someone who's having an amazing day and you can catch a little of that yourself or run into someone who's having a horrible day or see something horrible and you can catch that as well. Yeah, it's almost a little contagious. Now, on top of that, if you are someone who believes in an energetic connection that you might have, well, that's another way that you might be picking up on the energy of what's happening in the world around you. And that energy could be leaving its imprint on you, on your system. And uh, what are you going to do about that, right? You're, so you could be impacted through your emotions, through sensation, through energy. On top of that, there's the culture that we grow up in. And that could be the wider culture of our country or what we see on TV or hear on the radio, if you still listen to the radio. Or it could be the culture within your family, your lineage, the kinds of things that have been handed down from generation to generation. And maybe you know what I'm talking about, that there are legacies within your family, stories that live on about maybe hard work or suffering or poverty or uh, love being lost or people being cheated on or people not being loved, being rejected. I'm naming a lot of negative stories because those are the ones that have the most powerful impact on us. And again, they do not belong to us necessarily. They're just something that was given to us from the lineage that we possess. Just like they maybe gave you uh, brown hair or blue eyes or purple skin, they also handed you a set of beliefs that were handed to them by their parents, that were handed to them by their parents, and so on and so on, back to who knows, the beginning of time, right? The thing is that you have a choice and you have an opportunity here in the present to do something about it. And that is what we are going to talk about next here on the show. What do you do if you accept that it's possible that whether it's through your mirror neurons, your right brain, um, picking up on the energy, picking up on emotional experience, things getting stuck within you, your lineage. There are even more ways, actually, that this could be happening. But I'll just leave you with those because I think you get the point. The way that you feel right now may not be fully about you. So what if you could clear away the parts that aren't you and just be left with the parts that are you? Well, it might be easier to deal with that, right? 
There's another actually important component of this, which is I've named all the unintentional ways that we could take on other people's stuff. But sometimes there are literally intentional ways that we take on the things that other people are experiencing. Um, some people know this if if you've experienced uh, a parent, let's say, who was having a really hard time. You may, as a child, have taken on the responsibility for making them feel better. And in fact, you may start to experience many of the same symptoms that your parents exhibit as a way of sympathetically resonating with them, of staying in connection with them, and potentially trying to resolve the issue for them. But that's impossible to do. You can't resolve someone else's issues, you can't fix another person, and you can't do the work for them. That's why relationship can be so complicated at times because all you can really truly affect is yourself and your part in things. And you can encourage and invite and hope that the other person is going to show up for you. So, all right, enough about that. I think you got it. And now I want to give you the secrets of, or at least a few secrets um, of how to clear yourself of that energy. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit more about the people who are kindly sponsoring this episode of the Relationship Alive podcast. As I mentioned at the top of the hour, uh, Talkspace is one of those companies, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them in a moment. But the first company that I want to tell you about, and they wanted to sponsor this episode specifically, um, you may or may not know that I recently got married. And Chloe, my wife and I, we were looking for a great way to create a wedding registry because we had some unconventional ideas about what we wanted to do and we didn't want to just, you know, go online to Macy's and choose a bunch of stuff that honestly neither of us really wanted more stuff anyway. Well, maybe a few select things, just special things. But what we were really looking for was a way to create an experience and a way to give our guests uh, an easy way to choose something that felt right for them in terms of what they felt like gifting to us on the occasion of our wedding, um, giving them plenty of choice and having it at the same time really align with our values. So we ended up creating a registry with Zola.com, that's Z-O-L-A, and that allowed our guests to either get us those few special things or to pool their money to help us toward airfare for our honeymoon or to buy specific experiences for us, uh, Airbnb uh, stays in various locales, gift certificates that we could use. There were lots of, of possibilities. And so Zola.com was perfect for that. And along with sponsoring this episode, they are also offering $50 credit toward your registry if you visit Zola.com slash alive and start a registry with them. So it's a free service, just so you know. And, um, and if you know someone who's getting married, you might want to tell them about this deal um, because not only does it get them a great place to have their registry, but it also gets them an additional $50 gift. You could try taking credit for that, but um, that might be a little tacky. In, in any case, the address is Zola.com slash alive, and that's Z-O-L-A dot com. And uh, I think at this point, there are over 300,000 couples that have used them for their wedding registry, and that includes me and Chloe. So also, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I've been sponsored for the past few months by Talkspace.com. And I'm so appreciative of them showing up for the Relationship Alive podcast. And in fact, I decided to try out their online therapy service because, well, hell, I could use a little more support and couldn't we all, really? And it seemed reasonably priced and I just wanted to try it out. So... Um, the way that it works is you sign up, you tell them a little bit about what you're looking for. They give you some choices for available therapists and you can choose the person that feels right for you. And then basically it's a way of doing 
therapy where you write, you can send them messages or audio or video messages, and then they get back to you. And they do that at least once a day or more, depending on the plan that you have. For me, it's been a lot like having a journal that writes back to me or having a honestly, a cheerleader, someone who's really there to support me and help me find the things that I'm doing right. And who also has been giving me some great thoughts and advice about places where I truly have needed some help. So we all need support. And if you're um, looking for a resource that could help you, I encourage you to try out Talkspace. And they're, as I mentioned, giving $30 off on your first month of therapy if you visit Talkspace.com slash alive and use the coupon code alive. That will get you $30 off. And uh, thank you, Talkspace, for sponsoring this episode of Relationship Alive. And now back to the show and this question of how do you clear away that energy that belongs to other people? So some of this comes down to you and your own level of awareness about what those things might potentially be. That's one thing. Or on top of that, there's also um, just knowing that it's happening for you. So you might know specifically what it is, or you might just have this general sense of like, wait a minute, this this experience that I'm having, this doesn't feel like it's totally mine. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, potentially, or maybe it doesn't, in case, hello, we're speaking the same language. And it could be too that an experience that you're having, you've had for so long that you associate it with yourself, you associate it as yours, but it's really not yours. Um, for instance, our parents make a pretty big impression on us when our young, when we are young. And so this way that you're feeling could very well be from the impression that your parents made upon you oh so long ago. But all is not lost. And while therapy is great and helpful or getting some coaching work or listening to the Relationship Alive podcast or joining the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. I think we now officially have more than a thousand members. Awesome. People who are there to support each other and uh, having amazing relationships. Um, there are still things you can do yourself. It's not necessarily up to other people to fix this for you. So I'm gonna give you a couple simple strategies that you can use, they're really easy. And one is more or less neutral in terms of having any sort of uh, spiritual uh, backing to it. And then the other is gonna be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more energetic. And for those of you who are tuned in that way, it might even be a little more powerful. So, and they'll be connected, so you're, you're gonna see in a moment. So the first is really the power of your breath connected with the awareness that you may have these feelings and thoughts and beliefs and constructs, ways of seeing the world that don't belong to you. So rest in that awareness. And this is more like a mindfulness, an embodied mindfulness practice where you can close your eyes. And I, I wouldn't do this if you're driving. <laughs> so you might wanna do this part after you've gotten where you're going. But basically you, you can close your eyes if that's helpful and breathe. And breathe into the question mark, into the possibility. What if what I'm experiencing isn't mine? And see what arises invite something to arise. Now it could be nothing or it could be like a huge smack upside the head where it's like, oh my God, that whole thing, that whole drama that I've been playing out, that's not even me. This is a helpful moment to embody curiosity for yourself. 
the curiosity that comes up if you ask, simply ask the question, what if this feeling that I'm having, this experience, this belief, what if this is not mine? Is it possible? And then you might ask yourself, well, what percentage of what I'm experiencing is mine? And perhaps a number will float right up. Oh, 30% is mine. The other 70% baggage that, that came from someone else, somewhere else in some other time. It could be right here and now, or it could have been years ago. You don't have to know. You don't have to know. If you do get that kind of insight, that's great. But that's not as important as simply recognizing that if it was in your capacity to take those things on, it is also in your capacity to get rid of those things. So now you've opened yourself up to the possibility and the experience of what you carry that is not completely yours. So let's clear it. Let's take a step in that direction, or maybe two steps, or maybe this will be all that you need. So the first thing that I'd like you to try is to simply use the power of your breath. And you might pair that with some visualization. So what I like to do is imagine a river, a fierce, powerful river flowing through my body. And I take a deep breath in, And then as I exhale, with the force of that exhale, I imagine that water pouring through me and dislodging all of the things that aren't mine. And I might do that a few times. So deep breath in. And just imagining all of that, all of that stuff that doesn't belong to me, just flowing from this tributary that flows through me into the river of existence, of consciousness, or just not on me anymore, not part of my system. And if you noticed places in your body where you could feel that stuckness, maybe you felt it as as tingling or constriction. This is the language of sensation that your body speaks and your limbic brain speaks. If you notice that as you do the breathing, you might send your breath to that, to and through that part of your body with the intention of clearing away everything that isn't yours and just leaving behind what is, what is yours to deal with. So another additional element that could help you is to add some language to it. And this is where things potentially get a little mystical. But I will let you know that this clearing that I'm about to offer you, which was uh, offered to me and Chloe by our teacher, Gabrielli LaChiara, who's been here on the show actually way back in the beginning. Um, I think the title of that episode was What Else is Possible? with Gabrielli LaChiara. When you are willing to recognize that you actually have command over your body, over your being, the energetic parts of you, the consciousness parts of you, and the physical parts of you, to at least some level, and perhaps the deepest level, you have authority when it comes to you. And so with this clearing, and I'll give you the language first and then tell you how you use it. So the language is, I command my body and my being to release anything that isn't mine. And then what we say at the end of this clearing is to gift it to the light of consciousness, which is kind of like what I was talking about a moment ago, the, that river of, of existence. It's just the place from which we all draw. 
Uh, so that's how the clearing goes. I command my body and being to release anything that isn't mine and to gift it to the light of consciousness. Activate change and generate healing immediately. And then you take that deep breath in and exhale with a cleansing breath. Now, if you don't like that light of consciousness language, that's fine. Try just, I command my body and being to release anything that isn't mine. And then take a deep breath in and flush it all through. Just try using the power of your own language, harnessing your left brain for the forces of good, right? To get rid of the things that aren't yours. And if you feel comfortable, do the whole thing. So again, I'll repeat that for you. I command my body and being to release anything that isn't mine and to gift it back to the light of consciousness. Activate change and generate healing immediately. <sighs> I have to say, I feel pretty good just doing that here while we're recording. Because I think it's impossible to escape things that aren't yours. And in fact, um, I had to interrupt recording because I heard something, something off in the background. And I went and looked and sure enough, my kiddos were in an argument about something. And so there I was in the middle of it. And, and I'm sure that I picked up some of whatever triggered mess was going on. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to embrace that clearing right here and now. And I invite you, especially at this time, if you're listening to this during the holidays, you're undoubtedly picking up stuff from the people around you, families and friends. And so I invite you to get intentional with your awareness that what you're picking up may not be yours and what you're experiencing may not be yours. You may have picked it up. I think that's a better way of saying it. And that you are actually able to clear it using the power of your breath, using the power of intention, using the power of your language, and using some of that mystical power. And if that's what you're inclined to do. And see what that does. See how that leaves you on the other side. You may find that that 30% that was yours or that 20%, that it's actually pretty easy to just resolve on your own without too much effort or that it doesn't really command much of your attention. So there are, of course, more things that you can do. This is just one step in that direction, but I wanted you to have this because it's so important and it's fundamental to being able to claim your own experience, take charge of it, and get rid of the parts that really, you couldn't fix it even if you tried because it doesn't belong to you. That's it for this week, and I look forward to seeing you in the new year with a new guest for the show. And until then, we have lots of great things to choose from, so I'm still, I'm still thinking about who's going to be next, but I promise you it's going to be great. And in the meantime, I look forward to hearing from you. You can find me in the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. You can email me, neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, at neilsatin.com. And, uh, and if you're looking for support and want to work with me, I, at the moment I have a slot or two open. Um, so give me a shout. All right. I'm looking forward to being with you in the new year and seeing you in the new year. We've got lots of fun things coming. And I don't know if you could hear that, but the, the kids are getting restless. So I think it's time for me to go. In the meantime, I command my body and being to release anything that isn't mine and to gift it to the light of consciousness. Activate change and generate healing immediately. <sighs> See you next year. Thank you for listening to another episode of Relationship Alive. If you like what you've heard and want to make it easier for other people to find out about us, please take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and to rate and review us on iTunes. 
If you have questions or comments or want to continue the conversation, you can always join our Relationship Alive community Facebook group. And for more information about today's episode, visit us online at neilsatin.com slash podcast. Or you can always text the word passion, P-A-S-S-I-O-N, to the number 33444 for more information. Finally, do you have a burning question that you're hoping we can have answered here on Relationship Alive, either for a future or past guest? Let me know and I'll see what I can do. Take care and see you next time.